Hello, and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name's Nehemiah, and today we're going to be checking out this piece of metal, the Alliance Designs Scout, designed by Pat Hammond. So this is on loan from the uh, Passaround Group, provided by the manufacturer. So i just like to give a thank you for them and passing the knives around to the group. It's a great chance for everybody to see the knives and decide if they want to pre-order it. Uh, right now, you can pre-order this if you would like uh, on Blade HQ. I know they're taking pre-orders. I'm sure most of the main places like Knife Center and stuff like that are as well. Uh, they're not sponsoring this. Let's get into some size comparisons so you can see exactly what's going on here. This is a very small knife. The blade length is 2.25 inches. The cutting edge is 2.125 so a very small knife. I just reviewed the Civivi McKenna, which is also a small knife, but still much larger than the little Scout here. So very small knife, something that you know you want to know going into it. I think I think the profile of the knife is such that it's kind of hard to tell how big it is just by pictures. So if you're not really paying attention to the measurements on the spec sheet. On the websites, uh, you might be in for a surprise when you get the knife. It is a small little knife. Let's get a quick measurement here. Such a small knife, this uh, is gonna be one of its better attributes. And so we're clocking in at about 1.6 ounces, incredibly lightweight, uh, less than an ounce an inch, obviously. So good little measurement. The uh, blade stock thickness is about a tenth of an inch. Uh, which is, you know, pretty small, but considering you don't have a lot of height to get that grind down, it's not like crazy, crazy thin. So let's see here. You've got a grind that's just a little over half an inch, really. So it, it cuts like a normal knife, I suppose, in the sense of like the thickness behind the edge. Um, it's a good, yeah, it's a good size. That's a good size for sure. So for the dent, I'm going to zoom in a little bit because this is kind of a small knife. I want you to be able to see what's going on. So we're going to do the decent, the excellent, the nitpicks, and the terrible of this piece of metal. First thing in the decent I want to talk about is this blade shape. It's classic kind of drop point blade shape here. Uh, it's not really a ton of flats. It kind of looks like flats, but it's really just one giant belly almost. Uh, this is fine. It's not a recurve. If this was a recurve, I'd be a little annoyed, but... As far as like, you know, getting into letters and cutting tape on boxes and that kind of thing, this is going to do the job perfectly fine. Uh, obviously, the length of the knife is going to give you some problems slicing food. It's a decent slicer as far as the cut down. You know, it's, it's not a complete full flat grind, but a high grind. And, you know, it is a thin blade stock, so it's not going to be hard to push it through. It's just... You know, like a block of cheese is going to be wider than this blade is even going to be able to get through. So in that way, it's going to limit some of your options on the cutting. But I think given the size of the blade, this is about the most practical blade shape you can you can put on this. So that's good. I like that aspect of it. The satin finish on it is also appealing. Uh, very well done. The steel type is RWL34, which again is excellent. That's a, that's a super steel. It's a powdered metallurgy. It's uh, going to be really easy to sharpen, really easy to polish if you wanted to, uh, to a mere edge. So those are all positive attributes of the blade. Uh, I like that, you know, there's just the little maker mark on that side. Um, and then his name on this side, it's pretty tastefully done. It's so tiny that you know, it's not really going to distract you too much from what the rest of the knife is, is giving you as far as appearance. Next thing we want to talk about is a clip. Now the clip is decent. It's <laughs> almost as thick as the knife, uh, which is funny, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It gives you something to kind of grab onto when you're like trying to use the knife. Um, having the clip to kind of anchor down uh, is a good thing. So, you know, the clip isn't really counting against thickness while it's in your, your pocket because the clip is on the outside anyway. So that's hardly an issue. It's not particularly deep carry, but it's still just such a small little knife that I don't think it's going to bother too many people. I think they probably could have gotten away with just one screw instead of two. 
um, and then just drop it into like a little shelf or something to keep it straight. I, I don't think anybody's going to be yanking on this too hard. Um, anyway, so I think if you did that, you could have made this go up a little bit more and make it more deep carry than it is because it is kind of shallow, but otherwise it's fine. Uh, plenty of ramp. There's plenty of spring to it. In the description on the <laughs> couple websites, they were trying to pass this off as like a money clip. And so instead of clipping it to your pocket, you just clip like money and credit cards, I guess, and then throw the whole thing in your pocket. I find that kind of interesting that they would even say that, but I guess you can do that if that's your cup of tea. Next thing that I like is this milling pattern. It's kind of like a fishbone chevron type design. I think if this wasn't a part of the knife, the knife would be about as bland and vanilla as you could possibly make it. But with the milling and the anodizing on there, I think it definitely makes it pop. There's a bunch of different colors for the the uh, milling that they've got on this. So, you you know, if you buy one, there's a chance that you're not you're not going to have the exact same look as everybody else is going to buy one of these. Um, I think it's good. There's nothing inherently bad. I, I, I'm not going to say this is like an excellent part of the knife. I, th I can foresee like gunk and stuff getting in those little grooves and having to clean it out. But it does also provide some kind of traction on the knife, which would normally be difficult to do with such a small knife. There's no jimping in the traditional places. So having it on the side of the knife does give you a little bit more of a grip. Uh, so I can kind of give that all a pass. Ultimately, it's, it's in the decent. Uh, whether or not you think it looks good or not, I think I think it's fine that it's there. Last decent thing I'd like to talk about is the fit and finish. I am pleased to, to say that, you know, the... Parts of the knife that should be chamfered are, you've got perfect centering, everything is just well executed. The size of the knife, it it just makes the screws look a lot bigger than they are, but you know, you're not going to have little tiny minuscule screws on the, on the knife that would just be too fragile, I think. So they made the right call in, you know, what hardware they're using here. Um, I with something this small, I, th I feel like it's kind of hard to mess up, but still I got to shout it out when they, when they pull it off correctly that, you know, it might be a little bit more difficult to machine these parts with, you know, such just small surfaces. Uh, there's not a lot to clamp onto while the machines are doing the work. So there's something to be said for, uh, you know, them pulling off the fit and finish correctly on this. So that's good for the excellent. I have one thing, and this is the most obvious aspect of the knife and it's just how thin it is and light it is that this is going to be really easy to tuck into a pocket and not have to worry about um personally i like clipping it on on my actual pocket i don't want to just rolling around smacking into to keys and whatever else i have in my pocket um and it's high enough that if i clip it the bottom of my pocket is going to have lots of room to move around with the stuff that's in there and not even be touching the, the knife so i like the aspect extremely lightweight you could stick this in the watch pocket if you wanted to uh in your jeans um i think you can get away with that pretty easily this could be a good second knife it could be a good letter opener um just from its you know small size so all, all those are kind of contributing to if you're looking for something really low key i don't want to necessarily say a gentleman's folder i it seems a little flashy for that from an aesthetic perspective but you know you could slip this in a pocket in a tuxedo on your wedding day and nobody would notice you know so i i could see there's some kind of you know if you would otherwise not have a knife at all you might be able to sneak this one in in a pocket and, and be okay. couple nitpicks. Uh, we're going to talk about the action here and the nitpicks. It, it's not all bad, but I think ultimately it's a little bit short of what I'm looking for for a good fidget knife. So let's do it. Um, if you haven't been here before, we're doing the OCD, the open, the the close, and the disengage. I'm going to go in different order because you got to dis disengage the knife before you close it obviously so on the open it it's really designed you know it looks like it's designed rather for a light switch and you can light switch it and it sort of works what i found is that maybe 30 percent of the time i open it and it won't actually disengage all the way or it like barely limps to the finish line like if i want to make this fail it's very easy for me to do so the detent is pretty light you know it's such a small blade it's not going to shake out so not dangerous light but just in terms of the action it's kind of you, you really got to put some oomph into it 
now it's not all bad news for the open. I found the better way to do it is just pu push button. And when you do push button, you got to do it kind of in a specific spot. And then once you find that sweet spot, you're going to get pretty decent like action. It'll deploy every time and it feels a little bit more snappy than the, the light switch. Now, another, <laughs> another part of the problem with this knife is it's so small and you're, you're kind of seeing me fumble with it here. You can accidentally be holding your finger here, trying to grab onto the knife, ready for this like high powered light switch action that you need that you're going to accidentally put your finger over the end of the blade and kind of, you know, Chinese finger trap, shut it. So <clears throat> you have to be really mindful, not just with the way that you're using the flipper uh, to get the best results, but you also have to kind of do your finger gymnastics to hold onto the knife in the right spot so that you can get that power. So if I do everything right, you know, I'm holding it and I'm clearing, making the clearance here, I can get that action really nice. But I kind of feel like I'm bending and contorting my fingers in a very awkward and weird, weird way. It doesn't feel natural at all. Uh, so it's definitely, you know, something you can achieve, but <laughs> it's not something that you're going to want to do uh, in my estimation of it so far. Uh, for the disengage, I've got some problems too. So down here, you've got some tiny little chamfers that kind of help, you know, with the access. But again, when I look at it from the side, there's no, you know, milling or tapering down on the, on this scale to give you easier access to that. And such it's, because it's such a thin knife, when I'm kind of jamming my thumb in there, it just, it's kind of painful and not painful, just like, I don't know, it would be so much easier access if I can just either move this chamfer up a little bit higher so I can get some more leverage when I go. Because if I actually do it where the chamfers are, I have to push really hard and far to actually break the clearance for the lock bar to disengage. So I'm finding myself having to go way up here to actually disengage it. So these are not giving me any benefit whatsoever, even though these chamfers aren't doing as much as I would like it to in the first place in terms of how deep or open it is on this side of the scale. So disengage is pretty low. Um, there's no lock stick, so it's not like terrible, but it's definitely something I don't enjoy doing, you know, more than just when I have to. Um, for the close, it, it, it is bearings in here. So it, it's somewhat smooth of a knife, but you just have very little mass to work with. So as far as like it drop shutting, it's just not gonna happen. I mean, it, it's so light, it's so small. I'm just kind of closing it with my finger like normal. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it, it's not something that I'm actually looking forward to playing with or fidgeting with. So it, this would be purely from a practical standpoint of I need a knife, I need to be able to deploy it and put it away. It's okay, it's competent, I suppose. It's not It's not blowing my mind with any kind of you know amazing action. This you know $70 Civivi uh, McKenna is awesome. I mean, every single aspect of the action on this knife is better than this knife. The open, the close, the disengage, everything is like twice as good at least. So this knife, in contrast, it's hard. It's kind of <laughs> unfair for the scout to be reviewed immediately after I reviewed this knife because I know that, you know, a small knife can pull it off really well. Um, this is just kind of by the books, in my opinion, as far as the action goes. Uh, not really looking to stand out in its particular class. Last nitpick I have is just the ergonomics. Uh, another unfortunate <laughs> comparison for the Scout is that, you know, the McKenna is a much longer blade, you know, for sure. And, you know, I'll, I'll kind of zoom out here so you can see kind of the, the grip. Uh, this, this is great. This is comfortable. It's a full four finger grip. Uh, very small knife, but, you know, weight wise, these are basically the same. So, in terms of, you know, the EDC ability, you know, if I can get the same weight, but have better ergos and a longer blade, then I, I don't really have an excuse for the scout. It's not like god awful. It, it's just you don't get that pinky on there, really. It, it's not enough room to get that. So you're kind of holding it like this. Um, the clip is a little bit, you know, offensive i suppose like this one tapers down you got a little bit of a lift here but this 
is a little bit more pronounced. It's rounded fine, but again, when you're kind of holding it like this, it's just kind of jab at India. This is going to vary. You know, we all have different shaped hands and sizes and stuff. So, you know, if you got very, very small hands, I think this might be the knife for you. But every, I think everybody else is going to be, you know, just the, I need to pull it out, open up a box and put it away. I don't care about ergonomics for anything long term. That's fine. It's a nitpick. It's not terrible. It's just, it, it's not good. <laughs> Finally, let's talk about the terrible. I actually do have a terrible thing here. And that is the price on this knife. The price is $225 for this. Now, from a material standpoint, I can maybe justify the idea of a knife this size costing that much. You know, RWL34 is a fine steel, it's a super steel. This is definitely going to out outlast uh, the D2 steel in terms of edge retention and, you know, stainless steel, uh, corrosion resistant, that kind of thing. But... You know, this I could buy like three of these <laughs> for the cost of that. So I think three D2 steels will outlast one of these RWLs in terms of edge retention. But I mean, it's not as simple as just you know longevity in that. This isn't a utilitarian breakdown of, of value. You know, this is all subjective. There's some milling here going on. Uh, you know, that takes time and money and machine parts and all that. Um, the steel, the steel, you know, if it's M390, I feel like that would justify the price a little bit more or something comparable, you know. Um, and I don't think you're going to cut enough with this blade to even care about the steel type. But as far as justifying the price, I'm having a hard time doing that. Um, the finish is good. The, the you know, satin on this. Every, there, I don't know. I just feel bad about this. I don't think I would buy this knife if it was $100. So if it's $225, I feel like I have to put that in the terrible. I mean, I, I, this is 100% my opinion. Uh, I hope that people like this knife more than I do and feel like that price is more justifiable. But as far as my personal feelings, I think that is a hard deal breaker. If this was the same price as this knife the McKenna from Savivi then then I could you know be convinced to buy it just as like another little knife kind of like this that I can appreciate the finer materials and the machine work and know that it's just like a fancy letter opener type of a knife but I <laughs> for three times that cost I can't I can't swallow that pill personally so I think it was a whoops wrong knife. <laughs> well, that uh, what else do I need to say? That that's my conclusion. I, I want to put this knife on the screen. <laughs> okay, thank you for loaning this to the pass around group, uh, and I hope this was helpful to you. I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Bye.